Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Rose Wrights and I write and narrate Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction. Thank you so much to Chocoluck Chips for allowing me to use their amazing artwork in my thumbnail. If you haven't yet, be sure to check them out. Their link will be in the description box below. Thank you for joining me for Day 7 of Adrianette April. If you haven't seen the other previous six parts, be sure to check those out, they will also be linked below. Now then, please enjoy. Adrianette April, Day 7, Skips. Marinette sat hard at work at a small desk in her studio apartment. She let her hair grow long, reaching the middle of her back, straight and sleek, no longer in her signature pigtails. She hunched over, knitting a pale blue scarf, appearing to be almost finished. What you making? Tiki said over her holder's shoulder. Tiki and Marinette hadn't seen action in a few days, so Tiki had just woken up from her afternoon nap. Marinette glanced at her little friend as Tiki wiped cookie crumbs from her face. Today is Adrian's birthday, and I'm almost done with his present. Marinette made one last loop with the wool, then looked at it, admiring her craftsmanship. And there! Finished! She picked it up, slightly tugging on the fabric. Sturdy. It was perfect. It's beautiful, but didn't you make him a scarf a few years ago? Yeah, but his father claimed that gift and gave it to him, so this one is just for me. We're having dinner later. Marinette said, fishing a box out of her art supplies case, wrapping her present with a delicate bow on top. Tiki flitted to Marinette's cheek, giving her a look. No, Tiki, it's not that kind of dinner. We're just friends. No matter how much I want to be more, she muttered. Oh, well. The designer absentmindedly checked her phone out of habit, then jumped up from her seat like she was sitting on hot coals. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be late! Marinette ran to her closet, throwing unsuitable outfits to the floor finally settling on a lace-covered scarlet dress, fitted at the waist, then flaring out. With a little eyeliner and mascara, she was good to go. After checking her appearance one more time, she slammed the door behind her, only to open it a moment later. She had forgotten the present on her bed. Marinette grabbed it, tucking it securely under her arm. Okay, now she was good to go. Marinette sat at a booth, the present laying in front of her. Her fingers drummed rhythmically and anxiously. She peered around at other well-dressed couples, some sharing food, others sharing desserts, all on romantic dates. Come to think of it, Marinette looked too nice to be on a date with her friend, Adrian. Wait, not a date. No, this was just two friends hanging out at this super romantic, candlelit, overpriced Italian cuisine restaurant. Her fingers fell more rapidly on the package until she saw Adrian approaching and suddenly she felt calm. Adrian wore a navy suit paired with a light blue shirt, the top button undone. Marinette's mouth went dry at the sight of him, this boy who was definitely not just a friend to her. A lump formed in her throat and he smiled at her, half jogging in her direction. Hi, sorry. Hope you weren't waiting long. He stopped in front of her, towering above. No worries. She stood to greet him, the top of her head landing at his collarbone. On her tiptoes, she reached, putting her arms around his neck. Happy birthday, Adrian. Welcome to the old person club. He chuckled as they sat down. What do I win? He joked. Nothing. Getting old sucks. She said, sipping in the lemon water the waitress placed on her coaster. We're only 25. Adrian pointed out. Should my back be cracking so much when I wake up? He said, moving his back in a circular motion, his spine popping a few times. That's what you win. Unexplained back pain. Marinette giggled. Marinette loved their banter. She loved goofing off with him. She loved the way his eyes twinkled when he smiled at her. She just loved him. Everything about him. She cleared her throat. I got you something. She pushed the rectangular box at Adrian, her heart beating quickly, hoping he'd love it. Thank you, Mayor. 
he said, slipping a slender finger beneath the ribbon, it coming undone effortlessly. He removed the lid and let out an audible gasp. His eyes softened into a smile, crinkling lightly in the corners. You made this? It's beautiful! I'm so glad you like it, Adrian. I was hoping you would. Help me tie it! He exclaimed, placing it around his neck. Marinette formed it into an ascot, the fabric complementing his outfit perfectly. This looks so familiar. It looks like the one my father gave me for my 14th birthday. Did you... He hesitated, feeling the woolen fabric. I, uh... Should she tell him the truth? That was nine years ago. She was surprised he even remembered that scarf. She could barely remember what she ate for breakfast. I made that scarf. Adrian opened his mouth to speak, Marinette speaking over him. You were just so happy that I couldn't tell you the truth. I only wanted you to be happy, and you were, so that was enough for me. Marinette wasn't sure how he might react, but to her surprise, he took her hand from across the table, smiling. You're so perfect. Well, you're my friend, and I care about you, so... Her face, no doubt, matched her dress. No, you're not, Marinette. Sadness flashed across her face, so Adrian explained quickly. We've never been just friends. There's always been something more between us. Don't you agree? Marinette wanted to scream yes, but she couldn't find her voice. She just nodded, too stunned to speak. Marinette would have given anything to hear these words when they were teenagers. And now it was actually happening. Or was it a dream? It was hard to tell because she dreamed of this very scenario so many times. Okay then, Adrian said, collecting his thoughts and choosing his words carefully. I have something for you. Adrian, aggressed. You can't get me a gift for your birthday. Marinette's heart hadn't slowed down in the slightest. Adrian just laughed in response, pulling a small box and sitting it on the table. I'm not going to get on one knee now on the chance that you say no, but... Adrian, what are you... He flipped the top of the box, revealing a dainty rose gold ring, covered in diamonds varying in size. She fell silent. What was he doing? The ring. How he felt about her. Marinette had no idea what brought this on. They weren't dating and had never dated. And tonight he was asking her to... Marry me. Adrian, I... Sorry, he said, rubbing the bridge of his nose nervously. I mean, please marry me. Politeness aside, she couldn't wrap her mind around this. Why do you want to marry me? She said, barely a whisper. You've always cared about me and been there for me. Something about you feels like home. I've always wanted my wife to be my best friend, and that's you. Every moment you've made fun of me, I've loved you. Every second you poured your heart out to me about Luca, I've loved you. Since the day I gave you my umbrella and our hands touched, I've loved you. I've loved you since then, and I'll love you tomorrow. For the rest of my life, I'll love you regardless of your answer. He took a breath which felt like the first one he had taken during that entire monologue. He held out the ring to Marinette across the table, who still stared at him, mouth gaping open, no words left to say except, Yes, she whispered. Yes, I will marry you. She leaned across the table, sharing their first kiss, as he placed the small ring on her equally tiny finger. She admired the ring adorned with metal vines, diamonds encasing the band. Marinette giggled, entwining her fingers with his. This is crazy, you know? What are Nino and Alia going to think? Our parents! Adrian shrugged. I haven't given it much thought. Marinette sat in silence. Everyone's world seemed so normal. They sat enjoying their conversations while Marinette and Adrian's lives were changing. Adrian smiled at his future bride, taking in her features, holding her hands, basking in the love they shared. Now they weren't just old, 
They were about to be old and married, and they could hardly wait. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a lot of April left to go with even more stories. Also, leave me a comment telling me what you thought. If you're not sure what to comment, say surprise engagement. As always, stay miraculous!